Hello guys, welcome to lab report number 6, November 3rd, 2015. Today I'm uh, showing you a bunch of devices that I haven't been talking about really in any earlier episodes or lab reports for that matter. And um, maybe that will also help you to explain a little bit um, about you know how I run things, how I run the lab, how I run my channel and so on a little better. But the first thing that I want to do is actually to open this package here. It recently came here from Canada, sent to me by a certain YouTuber that I guess uh, basically every one of you already knows. And uh, yeah, we have a note inside. Let's read it. Dear post-apocalyptic inventor, please accept this genuine minus wrench. Your discerning eye will no doubt note the lovely and authentic partner of grease, rust, ore and possibly gold. This wrench has served me well as both a fine adjustment tool and an effective whittlerizer. You will find it a fine addition to your bug out bag. In the parlance of our time, it is a skookum chucher. Faithfully your fan, AVE. Well, this is just great, <laughs> got to tell you. <laughs> I mean, I read it before, of course, but uh, yeah, I have to smile just now seeing it. Okay, so what we have inside is, of course, the famous, or at least among his viewers, I guess, famous uh, Rustal S12H minus wrench, the adjustable wrench with a hammer head. And uh, actually I wanted to have one of those for a long time. And that is after I like saw it on his channel, of course. And yeah, I basically tried my best to find anything like this in Germany. But as far as I can tell, uh, Rustal, which is like, I guess, situated somewhere in Canada, seems to be the only company that really makes this uh, kind of tool. And of course, uh, it will be used extensively and you will see it in the future, I promise you that. <clears throat> and yeah, what is it with me and the AVE channel? There has actually been a long time contact between us and uh, there is actually a project that I have been working on that I am basically have been like developing for him or for him and his friends, I don't know. But um, it's basically about this device that you can see down here. I will not tell you any details at this point in time. But it is basically a power supply unit for the EDM project that AVE has been talking about um, for a couple of months. And I guess if you are one of his Patreon supporters, you might know more about that um, than other people actually. But um, first of all, of course, if you're not yet um, an AVE fan, please check out his um, channel. You can also find a link to his channel in the video description. He's really a great guy, um, making really talking about lots of different stuff, very different topics. Um, he's he has got like another focus than me, but he's also doing a lot of electronic stuff. So please check it out. Um, the EDM uh, module that you can see here is not completed yet, but it's finished to, I would say, about 80%. Most of the things that I'm doing now at the moment is basically to um, tweak the regulating circuit for the switching converter that is inside. And that might not sound like much work, and it is also not a lot of physical work, but uh, a lot of mental work, because you have to um, do a lot of... Um, yeah, a lot of thinking basically and sometimes uh, your capability to do that is a limited resource so that can be kind of hard. And um, on the left hand side here you can see um, the what I called like the vacuum tube power supply which is a device that I've been talking about in the last uh, lab report about a week ago and I have been spending tons and tons of time um, on building these uh, converters that you see up here because they are actually quite similar to the converters used in the EDM but I don't want to put like the EDM itself in any danger and that's why I'm using this to experiment on the circuits or on the control part of the circuits really. So um, these projects are actually related um, but I also hope that I would find the time to make a video about this uh, long before the EDM is really finished. And um, for now we will, uh, or in the coming weeks or so, I will um, 
where, if I should make videos about this I will show you the electronics that I made here and not the ones that are actually in the EDM. Um, the stuff that you can see down here is um, another platform that I basically developed because out of necessity um, when working on the EDM and it's basically um, yeah, it's basically just a power supply, a development board, um, a large boost converter and some peripheral electronics to connect the two to uh, the three things together and I actually used this setup a couple of months ago to um, yeah, find out uh, if my approach was theoretically feasible or not um, as of now this is not like the state of the art anymore so I'm not really using it anymore but yeah you have seen this microcontroller setup in other videos of mine where I just needed a microcontroller and this might be an interesting thing in itself once I find the time to um, complete it really as a unit as you can see there is not even um, anything insulating like the mains voltages here and so on so this is like kind of dangerous and that's why I really didn't make a fuss about it in any video um, I have put the vacuum tube amplifier that I have shown you last week on top here as well because um, this is another another project that is actually um, driving me on to um, complete this unit because it's not just that I'm using these converters as experimental platforms for the EDM the finished device is then going to be used or it will be its first use um, to do vacuum tube experiments which I want to include in my video about the vacuum tube amplifier because I guess it's not really um, it's not a good idea for me, I guess, to make a video about this without explaining some of the basics of vacuum tube electronics because um, I have noticed that in many of my videos people do not have so much basic knowledge about electronics in general and that's when we're talking about modern electronics and I guess that vacuum tube electronics is such a fringe topic really um, that it will be necessary to do some basic experiments and so on so the video about this will come after I have been talking about the um, vacuum tube power supply. Um, the but there is more and um, you will see a common pattern here because many of these devices are um, lab equipment or part of the infrastructure of my lab that I have developed basically around um, developing the EDM so I don't want to I don't want to give anyone the feeling that the EDM is uh, like so important that I'm like have spent like thousands of hours of work to build like an infrastructure around it that's not really it it's just that it has given me like how could you say it um, um, it just it just gave me like a, a practical or um, a very specific reason to do things that I wanted to do anyways so um, the next thing that I really did or the first thing that I really um, did out of necessity to test the EDM was to build the isolation transformer because I wanted to um, run it on 110 volts rather than 220 volts. Uh, I also wanted to have like the safety of an isolation transformer so that gave me a reason to complete this project which again I had planned to do for years but sometimes you're just, um, you just don't have enough reasons to get actually to work on it. And um, it's basically the same with the other two devices that you can see up here. This is like a 6 or I guess no, it's a 750 watt uh, switch mode power supply for an output power of 12 volts, uh, which I um, use to power the large boost converter, the DC to DC, DC converter, that you could see um, a couple of minutes ago on this development platform of mine and this is basically a modified uh, ser server power supply and uh, yeah maybe I will talk about this in some future videos as well and in the middle here you can see my programmable dummy load uh, which I have um, really also not really been talking about except for my one video about the welding transformer where it appeared basically out of nowhere and um, 
the thing is that I made this really also to test the converter for the uh, for the EDM, but it's something that can actually be used in basically all of my other converter based projects, also the welding machine projects and so on. So this is yet another thing that I wanted to do anyways, but you know, as it sometimes is, you just uh, really get to it when you really need it. And as you can see here again, this is another device which I only developed to, the po to that point where it could like, was just bare bones, could barely work. Um, I didn't even take the time to finish like the enclosure, like putting the front panel on or even like um, adding any real um, adjustment pots or switches or anything. So this thing still has to be reprogrammed every time you want to change some of the parameters, which is of course totally cumbersome. But yeah, so just some people I guess might be wondering about me taking uh, a lot of time for some of my projects. And the reason for that is simply that um, the reason for that is simply that I don't have the money to buy um, any of the things that I need to develop the stuff that I really want to work on. So there is like a necessity for me to build up the infrastructure around the projects myself. And to be honest, I don't really want to miss it because there is really no other way, I would say, to learn all the things that you need to know if you don't go this way. And some people, I guess, would like to lecture me about how to run things and so on, but to be honest, uh, I don't care what you think about it. <laughs> because this is my way to do things and there is no other way for me to do things, really. I have to understand every bit of, <laughs> of the um, even the peripheral electronics and so on to design my stuff. And yeah, well, the thing really is, and that's, I don't know, I'm kind of maybe too sensitive about these things sometimes, but you have to imagine that I really spent like, I, I had a lot of time over the last four or five days and I really spent all the time working on this unit. Um, of course, um, really, I was really pushing it because I finally want to get like the control circuits for the EDM to that point where I don't have to bother anymore if it will work once I ship it to Canada and so on. Yeah, and so much about what I have been doing in the last few days. Um, of course, I'm still hoping that I will find the time soon to make another video um, which is a bit better prepared and I'm sorry for that but yeah I'm pushing myself to the to the limits every day there's really not more I can do at the moment um, but um, there are two possibilities the first possibility is that I will um, be successful in everything I'm doing here and hopefully I will find the time to make a comprehensive video about this unit there's so much interesting electronics in here that I could talk about and I will definitely do that at one point. Um, but there is also another chance, and that is something that I have been using quite often lately, and that is to insert smaller projects um, that I can do like on one or two days and make videos about it. That's, for example, the case with my um, car stereo slash home stereo hack and stuff like that. Those are videos that I can really make within one or two days of work. But be that as it may, you will hear from me again soon.